Hello and welcome to the much requested video tutorial for this Kindle proof pattern that has been going around. Uh, the pattern creator, Kate Lauren, was gracious enough to give me permission to go ahead and make a video tutorial for you guys. I know it's kind of hard to read patterns sometimes if you're not used to it, so hopefully this video will help make it a lot clearer for you. So um, let's go ahead and go over the materials we're gonna need first. First and foremost, obviously you're gonna need your yarn. This is the yarn I'm gonna be using. I've already got it set up, so here's just the label. Um, the pattern calls for a super bulky weight. That's what this is. And you're gonna need an eight millimeter hook. That's what this takes. So here's my eight millimeter hook. Doesn't matter which type you want to use, as long as it's an eight millimeter, it's fine. Um, you're gonna need what I think will help a lot of y'all um, is a stitch marker. It's one of these little guys here. If you don't have one of these, um, you can use a safety pin or even repurpose a paper clip if you need to. Um, and then you're also gonna need a tapestry needle for sewing on the shelf and the handle at the end. And you're also gonna need some stuffing for your poof. That is polyfill, I got that on Amazon, it's super cheap. Um, so as you can see here, I've kind of, I've got my pattern in a plastic sleeve. I like to do that so I can reuse the paper once I finish a row. I'll just mark it off like that. And when I'm done, I can erase it so I can reuse this paper as many times as I want. All right, that's all of our materials. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so for our first round, what we're going to be doing is we are going to be doing six half double crochet into a magic ring. This entire pattern is worked in half double crochet, so it's super simple. If you've never done that stitch before, I will show you how to do it. Um, but first, we need to make our magic ring. Now, normally when you are first starting a crochet project, you're gonna start with a slip knot. There's a hundred different ways to do it. This is just the way that I do it. So you would pull it, pull it tight, that's your slip knot, and you would start your foundation chain from there. But when we're working into the round, working into a magic ring is a lot simpler. So I'm gonna go ahead and start as if I'm making a slip knot again. So I've got these two. I'm gonna take the left side, pull it over, right side, pull it over, and then work up the left side again through here as if it's a slip knot. But instead of pulling it tight, I'm gonna go ahead and pull, put my yarn hook, sorry, into this loop here. And then we're going to go ahead and start working into this circle. So to do a half double crochet, you're gonna yarn over your hook like you normally would for a double crochet, insert into this circle. We're gonna pull it up. So now I've got one, two, three loops on the hook. And instead of pulling through the, through the first two, yarning over and pulling through the last two again, like you normally would for a double crochet, for a half double crochet, you simply yarn over and pull through all three on the hook. So, super simple. I'm gonna go ahead and do another one. That's two, three, four, five, And six. So we go ahead and just double check and count our stitches. I do this at the end of every row just to make sure that I am on track. I know it's tedious, but it is super helpful. So one, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. Now for our second round, we're going to be doing a half double crochet increase. We're going to be doing that six times. Now, here's something I wanna point out to you about this pattern really quick that is really simple. Each round and the round number up until round 10, it's gonna correlate 
to the number of stitches that you have in each row. So you can see round two, you're doing a half double crochet increase six times for a total of 12 stitches. Two times six is 12. Round three, half double crochet and an increase six times. Three times six is 18. So that's gonna be an easy way for you to remember how many stitches you're supposed to be having in your row if you're not looking at your pattern the entire time. So let's go ahead and start on row two to do a half double crochet increase into each stitch. Working in the round, you have to increase your stitches to give a rounded shape until you get to the point where you want to close it and then you start decreasing your stitches. So we're going to work into this first stitch if I can find it. <laughs> Sometimes this bulky yarn it's hard to tell. I'm going to work in one half double crochet and then we're going to work in another one into the same stitch. So now we've got two stitches, one, two, in just one stitch, and that's how we're gonna increase all the way around. Now at this point, I'm going to put my stitch marker into my first stitch that I made there so I can remember where I've started this round. Because we're not working in true rounds where we close the round at the end every time, it's more of a spiral this stitch marker is gonna save your life, believe me. Once you get into those bigger rounds where you're doing 40, 50, 60 stitches, it's really easy to lose count. So these stitch markers are really gonna help you maintain your rounds so you know where you are. So we've got one, two, and then we're just gonna work into the rest of the stitches all the way around. So for this round, two stitches in each stitch. Six times. Seven, eight. Nine, 10. Seven, twelve, and you can see I'm right back here at my stitch marker. So I can see this is where I started. I'm gonna go back and count, make sure I have the right amount. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Perfect. I know it's kind of tedious, but it really does help to count your stitches at the end of each round to make sure you are still on track. So we've done round two. Now we're gonna move on to round three, which is a half double crochet in the first stitch, and then a half double crochet increase in the second stitch. We're gonna do that six times for a total of 18 stitches. So half double crochet. That's gonna be our first stitch. So I'm gonna undo my stitch marker and move it up here. So that was the first stitch. And now in the second stitch, we are going to do two stitches for a total of three. So all of your stitches around this round are going to be in groups of three. So there's stitch four and then five and six. And that's also another thing that's gonna be easy for you to remember. Each increase in round three is gonna be on the multiples of three. So you do one, your increase will be two and three, then the increase will be five and six, and then eight and nine, so on and so forth. Same thing for the rest of the rows. In round four, your increase will be on three and four, seven and eight, 11 and 12, etc. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue working this row, and then I will meet you at the end. Okay. Oh, sorry, so I've just finished round three. I'm gonna go ahead and mark that off on my paper. I double 
checked and made sure I had 18 stitches. Now at this point, you're gonna wanna make sure um, that your correct side of your work is facing outward. I started a little backwards, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch mine so that my right side work is facing out. So you see how this is showing like the pretty side. This is not as pretty. That's our wrong side. So I'm just gonna make sure that my right side is showing. You may have started it so that your right side was out from the beginning. And you can kind of choose which side you want to be showing out. So now we're on round four where we're doing two half double crochet and then a half double crochet increase times six for a total of 24. So here's my stitch marker to show where I started the round. I'm gonna go ahead and work into that. And move my marker up. I know this part is kind of tedious as well, but really it is going to save your life, I promise. So on the last round, we worked one and then we did our increase. This time we're gonna work two before we do our increase. So I did one stitch in the first stitch. We're gonna do one stitch in the second stitch. And then on our third stitch is where we're gonna do our increase. So stitch three and stitch four. And that's the gist of the pattern, guys. Um, until you get to row 11, that is what you're gonna be doing. Each time you're gonna increase the number of single stitches you do before you do your increase so that you're gonna end up with more stitches until you get to row 11. So I'm going to let you guys work until you get to row 11 and then um, go ahead and pause the video here. And then once you get to row 11, restart it and I will meet you there. All right, welcome back. You should have just completed round 10. And if you've been keeping up with your stitches and using your stitch marker, you should have 60 stitches. I wanted to show you too, you can tell that you've been keeping on track because all of your increased stitches, you can see they kind of make this V and they should all be stacked on top of each other like this. So you can tell that you have stayed on with your pattern. Um, I just wanted to do a quick check in as we move on to row 11, where we are simply just doing a half double crochet in each single stitch across for 60 stitches. So uh, go ahead and pause the video and do round 11 and I will meet you back here and we will talk about doing our decrease rows. Okay, so at this point you should be done with round 11 and ready to start round 12. Now round 12 through the end, we are going to be decreasing all of our stitches to give us this shape here that we're looking for. So for the first round, what we need to do is 13 half double crochets in each stitch across. And when we come to the 14th stitch is when we're gonna do our decrease. So go ahead and start out. There's my stitch marker for my first stitch. Go ahead and move it up. So there's one, two, three, seven sorry see how easy it is just to lose count of the stitches <laughs> that you're doing eight nine I've usually got dogs needing something or children needing something so I lose my place quite often so I am very often just going back and checking and counting my stitches to make sure I'm keeping track of where I am that's eleven 12 and 13. All right, so we've done 13 
half double crochets in each stitch across. So now it's time for us to do a decrease. Before we were doing increases so we could make our base and now we're gonna be doing decreases to start making our top. So in order to do a decrease, what you're doing is you're pulling two stitches together. So these two stitches are the ones we're going to be pulling together. And a half double crochet decrease. You're gonna yarn over and insert yarn over and pull through. So you've got one, two, three loops on the hook. And then instead of pulling through like we normally would, we're gonna yarn over again, insert in the second stitch, yarn over and pull through. So now we have one, two, three, four, five loops on the hook. And in order to pull these two stitches together, we're just gonna yarn over one more time and pull through all five. So you can see, We've got a nice big chunky stitch there and that is our decrease now there is something i want to point out to you here the specific type of yarn that i'm using is very stiff when it's worked up depending on what on what kind of yarn you are using it may not be as stiff so you may not get as sharp of a cone shape as i do um what i'm gonna do is show you at the end how we are going to make it so that the poof will stand the way it's supposed to. So that is how you do the decreases. As you continue on with this round, you're going to continue that pattern of 13 stitches. And when you get to the 14th is when you're gonna do your decrease. So at the end of this row, end of this round, you will have 56 stitches. And then all you do is you just decrease the number every row. So we did 13 and then a decrease this time. And on row 13, you do 12 and a decrease for a total of 52. And as long as you're keeping track of the numbers that you're doing, once you get to this point, then you've done everything correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and let you pause the video here and let you work all the way through to round 17. And once you're done with round 17, meet me back here and we will talk about how to close the top. All right, welcome back. Now at this point, you should have just finished round 17, which is our last round of the main body. And let's zoom out a little bit here so you can see this is what we're working with here okay so here's our top where we just ended and this here is the bottom now you can see mine worked up pretty large because of the type of yarn that I was using the type of yarn that you use it may not come out this big it just kind of depends on what you use so in order to get our poof to sit how we want it to do, you need to make a little bit of a dimple here in the bottom. And I'm just gonna make that by pressing in the magic ring. It's gonna look like that at the bottom. And now you can see we've got a little bit of a flatter base that we can work with. Let's see in there, there it is. So I'm gonna just reach inside here and make sure it is even. And then I'm going to take a hold of that string that was from our magic ring in the very beginning and I am just gonna pull it tight. And that's gonna get it to close. Right. So now what I'm gonna do, it's a bit of a tight fit there, but it can, it can work. I'm gonna take some of my filling And 
just gonna get it in there to begin with. Now you don't want to stuff it too full. You want it to have a little bit of give, a little bit of slack. Um, that way you can kind of maneuver and um, get it to sit exactly how you want it to when you've got it on your lap. Um, otherwise, if it's too stiff, you run the risk of it just falling over. A little bit more stuffing. So it really just kind of feel for how it's, uh, it's filling out as you are putting the filling in um, and just, you know, plop it around, kind of make it as full or as slack as you want it to. It's really up to you. That's the nice thing about these um, poofs when you make them yourself. You can customize it pretty much however you want. I think that's good. Here's kind of what we're working with. It's got that nice conical shape to it that we want. So you've got my bottom so it'll stand up. And now what we're going to do is go here to the end where it says fasten off, leaving a long string and use a needle to close. So I'm gonna reinsert my hook, pull that loop, get rid of my stitch marker now since we've done all of the rounds. And I'm gonna take my scissors And I'm gonna just measure out a pretty good length. You wanna make sure you have more than you need. Sorry for the mess on my kitchen table. And then I'm going to pull through as if I was making a loop. And then I'm just gonna pull the rest of that yarn in and make a little knot. And that is gonna fasten us off. So now what we're gonna do, I'm going to take the yarn and I'm gonna thread this through. Here's the nice thing about having long nails. You just kind of push it right through. And we're gonna kind of just take these two sides of the poof and we're just gonna kind of press it together like this. So you want to find where these stitches kind of line up and then you just thread it through all the way across a couple of times, as many times as you want, so that you get it closed. All right, and you can see I kind of pressed this side in a little bit so it's more even. So that's gonna be the end of that. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna go back through and uh, weave the end in a couple more times. That way it is really nice and secure. Double back. Oops. 
and get a little nut and there we go now we are closed that's how our bottom's looking and you can still readjust this but that's our poof so now we are going to move on to the handle okay now for the handle we are going to work it um, like a normal stitch instead of doing the magic ring like we did beforehand so down here we can see for the first row we're just going to chain 20 and leave a long string so i'm going to go ahead and pull out pretty good tail and then get my slip knot going you can do yours however you want Oops. Even if you've been doing this for a long time like I have, sometimes you just make silly mistakes. <laughs> All right. There we go. All right, so here's my little tail. It's a good sized tail. And then we're just gonna chain 20. going to make sure we are set up. I like to kind of readjust my hook since we're going to be going back the other way. And it says to single crochet into the second stitch from the hook for a total of 19. So since we just did 20, this is the first stitch from the hook. This is going to be the second stitch from the hook. When I am doing my foundation chains, I like to make sure that I'm getting underneath both of those loops of the V. Just makes it, I think, a little bit nicer. So there's one. It can sometimes be a little bit difficult, but I just pry it apart like that. And you're just going to single crochet all the way across until you have 19 stitches. So go ahead and pause the video and I'll meet you back here. All right, so here I've got my 19 single crochets. So what we're going to do now is go ahead and chain one. Turn your work. And we are just going to single crochet all the way across so that'll give us a double layer <laughs> sorry the dog's coming up he wants pets <laughs> that'll give us a double layer for our handle Oops. <laughs> sometimes you get so in the mode of doing a specific stitch that once you change to a different stitch, you just get stuck, you know? I keep wanting to do half double crochets on these instead of singles. But that is okay. Half of the battle of any given crochet project is just maintaining your awareness and staying focused and you know sometimes that's really hard depending on what you've got going on dogs children cooking dinner tv's blaring phones ringing music blasting all of that stuff but uh, that's why i'm always counting my stitches so many times just to make sure that 
I've got the right ones. All right, so that is 19. So what I'm gonna do now is get my scissors out, cut us off. And since we're using the other end for sewing it on, I'm not too worried about this tail. We'll pull it through, make a little knot, and I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one off. So it's out of the way. All right, so we've got our handle. This is our right side of our handle. So this is the side that I'm gonna have facing up. Here's our nice long tail. So now you're going to take the top of your poof. I'll zoom out a little bit for you. You're gonna take the top of your poof and you're gonna just kind of measure kind of where you want your handle to be. I like that, I think that looks good. And I'm gonna get my tapestry needle back out. Get that threaded. And just line it up, eyeball it again one more time. And all you're gonna do is just find a spot and thread it through. Make sure that you're getting all the way across the handle so the whole thing is attached. See how I'm just finding a spot to thread it through. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be super pretty. As long as it works. All right, so there's one side attached. Nice. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go across again through here and just gonna thread my way to the other side through top like I've already done. That way I don't have a weird string hanging out anywhere. And I'm going to come out on this side now. Wrap the other side of my handle around. Make sure it's lined up. And we're going to do the same thing. Just thread through. Find a spot. attached on. Oops. I'm going to have to pull my tail in a little bit. And So now I've got my handle attached. You can see that's attached on there pretty nice. And I'm just gonna take my end here and weave it back through a couple of times just to make sure that everything is nice and secure. That's gonna make sure nothing's coming out where it's not supposed to be. You always want to make sure that you weave back in on your ends. It's going to give you a tighter weave. Oops, come on, there we go. And make sure that that is not going anywhere. So I'm going to go ahead and snip that off. There you can see, we've got our handle.
handle for our poof. And now we're gonna move on to the shelf. All right, so for our last part, which is our shelf, we are going to be chaining again, like we did for the handle. So I'll go ahead and make my slip knot. Oops. It's giving me trouble. And this time we are going to chain 16. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. All right. And then we are going to roll it over so we've got our stitches on the top. And all we're going to do is half double crochets, starting from the third stitch from the hook for a total of 14. So that's first, second, third, and a half double crochet. And that'll give us a total of 14 all the way across. So just go ahead and do your half double crochets in each of your chain stitches, and then I will meet you back here when you are done. All right, so you should have your 14 half double crochets done. And now we are going to fasten off and leave a long string to sew like we did with the other one. So let me pull some yarn out here. I'm gonna wanna make sure that it's at least as long as our stitches and then Probably just a little bit longer to make sure we have plenty to weave back on itself. Get my scissors. So, go ahead and cut here. And because we are using that one for sewing, I'm going to go ahead and cut off this tail from the beginning. Ooh, I need to sharpen my scissors. All right, now we're going to fasten this off. Pull that all the way through and pull it tight. So now we've got our lovely half double crochet row. I'm gonna get my tapestry needle back out. I'm going to pull my poof over here and I'm going to kind of just eyeball it to see where I want. You want it kind of down low so that you've got plenty of room for your tablet to sit in there and have the full support of the poof. So I think right about there is going to be good. So I'm going to start by getting it attached. And then you're just gonna do what you did before with the handle. And sew it on. Be patient with yourself. If you mess up, you can always go back and redo these little stitches. There's no, no need to rush. Be patient with yourself. This is one of the harder aspects of doing any project is getting those finishing touches put on. But it is so worth it.
just be sure you're going all the way across so you don't have any gaps or anything. So sorry, my camera cut out. So I, it didn't quite get the end um, of me going back through and weaving off the end here. All I did was um, weave it through a couple more times and then I tied a little knot here to um, make sure that it was secure. So there we have it. Here's our poof all done. We've got our handle, our shelf. You can see I've got a little bit of give in mine because I didn't stuff it too full so I can kind of manipulate it and get it to sit how I want. Let me go ahead and get my Kindle out. Get out of my little case that I made the other day. This is such a fun pattern. If you guys want me to do a tutorial on this one too, I will. Here's my really old <laughs> Amazon Kindle Fire from quite a few years ago. And there you go, all done. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and that it was super helpful for you and happy crafting everybody.